Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. Seven days. Seven days and counting. Seven days and counting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. So, it, let's see. Today is uh, my granddaughter Cindy's birthday. She's 10. And then my birthday will be the 6th. I, you know, I'm just so presumptive. I, it's very egotistical. I thought you knew this was a Cindy Cochran show. You're listening to the Cindy Cochran show. I don't know. I'm getting too dependent on the liners, I guess. But uh, you are listening to the Cindy Cochran show, and I am yeah, but Cindy you didn't hear Cochran. Any liners. No, I didn't. I was thinking about something else. Maybe we need to do an intro for you. Let's do an intro and a song that says "The Cindy Cochran Show." The Cindy Cochran Show. No, probably not. I like I like that music because it's so different from what the show is really going to be about because it sounds so serious and you know drive hard driving news and all that so okay so it's the cindy cochran show it is um, tuesday and uh, we're a week away from the election and just um six five days from my birthday i'm just I'm just saying okay uh and i will um i will be really close to that big number, that really big number that everybody is scared to be because they they feel like, hmm, it's all downhill from here. No, I think they most people start thinking that when they're 40 or 50 or 60, but I don't. It's just, it just keeps getting better. It's just better. You, you do have changes, of course, in your body, which is great. And, um, and then you have things that go wrong with you, so you get to go see your doctor more and, and all that. But uh, it's okay. It's okay because um, you know so much more. You're just a know-it-all because at this age, most of the time you are the oldest person in the, you know, in the room, and so you can say whatever you want to, and, you know, and they excuse it by your age. You play the age card if you need to. But a lot of times they don't listen to you as well. You're supposed to listen to your elders, you know, and respect your elders. And I guess you got to earn that though, right? Yeah. So anyway, I'm working hard to earn that. Listen, uh, I know that so many of you, this is hard to announce. Bob Smiley is not going to be here today. I shouldn't have told you to almost the last segment said, oh, you're still waiting for Bob. No, Bob can't be here. He just emailed me and said that he, not just a, an hour ago, uh, he said that he woke up with a sore throat and he has a show tonight. And so, you know, he had to weigh the Cindy Cochran show or I get paid. The Cindy Cochran show or I get paid. So, you know, we know you follow the money, right? Okay. And he, um, and he did just that. But uh, he said, I'm so sorry, you're going to hate me and all that. And I told him, don't worry, because guilt is a terrible thing to waste. I will I will put you back on the show when I want to, not when you're scheduled. No, I, of course, I want him to get better, and I want him to do well tonight and uh, make a lot of money. So anyway, Bob will not be here, but Brianna Donahoe is going to be on the show later on. Uh, I'm going to call her, and it's always fun with her. Uh, her and uh, well, my question for you is: Does she know this? <laughs> you are such a smart aleck. Uh, yes, she does. Richard, yes, I called her and asked her, and uh, she feels like it's, you know, like a kind of a dig because uh, I asked Bob first before I asked her, and she's um, so she's going to come on in uh, in replace of Bob. And now Brianna's not as funny maybe as Bob, but she is in her own way because she has such a great cynical view of everything, of just everything. And so um, I I love that. And so there's a lot of things that are happening right now that I want to get her take on, and what uh, and what she thinks. So I'm uh, I'm excited about about talking to her. But Bob Smiley will be back on. I'll give you plenty plenty of notice, like I did. You know, sat there and spent all that time writing up that thing on my Facebook page. So just cross out that picture of him. That's the greatest picture of him. Um, and Bob is extremely funny, and he's told me I've got so many different, you know, different uh, routines and stuff like that. I'm, I'm, uh, I want to, I want to talk about. And he was uh, recently divorced, and this was a huge, big thing for Bob because um, Bob has the most beautiful family, and this was a 
great devastation to him. And so how do you get up and be funny when, you know, when something like that's happened? And then he's, he's talked about that on the show and he came in and talked about how, you know, how the divorce has affected him. But now he's going to talk about how dating, getting back to dating when you're 40 years old. Uh, how does that work and how fun is that? And uh, the little subtle things that women I imagine it'd say. would be, be much easier, wouldn't you say? Of course not. No, he's trying to uphold his high Christian principles and go out. And women today are expecting I, every well, guy to be bad. Do you think, oh man, that'd be a good topic. Because I always wondered, my brother did the same thing around that age. Uh, or it happened, had to have the same thing. And I said, when you're looking for a date, are you looking to procreate? Or are you <laughs> looking for just like having a partner? Because I, I would say a lot of people who are younger, that's part of the reason getting married, so they could make have children together. Right. But now my brother has already had kids. Like, do you you got to have that? He's done it all. Well, yeah. you, well, I'm just saying, like, you know, you bring that yeah. up. Would you like to have kids, more kids? And they decided to have more kids. But you know, that kind of that kind of drives that plenty of fish dot com profile, mm-hmm. doesn't it? Like, you know, looking to make more kids. Well, I mean, the thing about this is that if they did I do that? Did I do something wrong? I had it. it went out for a minute. Uh, You're not supposed to talk about it. You just let it slide. Oh, okay, everybody. Disregard what I just said. All right, so anyway, if if somebody dates, you know, they get back in the dating field, and they always go for somebody younger, right? They don't usually go for their age, I don't think. I think they go for whatever is easiest. So, okay, so they go for somebody younger. When I younger. say easy, I don't mean like oh. predatory easy. I mean yeah. more of like, oh, I get along with this person really well. Because when you get along with somebody, it's easy. No, but here's so. the deal. Not please, let's be totally transparent in this. Is that you know that they want to feel good about themselves. They want to, you know, feel young again because they're out you know, getting ready to date like they used to a long time ago. But when you date somebody younger, it's like that song, Hey Nineteen. I know you don't remember that song, but it was the the best message for guys starting to date somebody and they, you know, they're like 30, 40 and they date somebody 19 and, and in the song he's talking like, you don't remember, you know, a lot of the people I remember that are singers and you don't know Aretha Franklin and you don't know the dances and all that stuff. So it, it all changes. And so that's what I, I wonder about is when a guy starts to date at that age and you do well, I think date somebody guys younger. and girls mentality I think are different when you're if you're looking at a I'm not 55 years old mm-hmm. but I imagine if I'm a guy and I'm dating somebody younger it'd be more because you live vicariously through them and that's what you find fulfilling through this younger person is they have a lot more energy they do right. a lot more things that you always wish you could have done when you were younger but it makes you feel um, younger too well that's what I'm right? saying that's how you know that's that's what you're hoping for but right uh, but it gets I, exhausting <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, I think because you can't talk about things. There's nothing to relate to them. There could be. You learn. You learn through through your relationship with each other. So, I mean, well, you you all people should know that, Cindy. Well, Sam is only seven years older than I. Well, no, but y'all got married within a month. A month. So y'all yeah. learned about each other afterwards. Well, we got engaged after a month, and then we got married the next month. So well, get, you yeah. you went through. You've gone through right two decades at least, right, of learning. But I think that. Two decades. How long have y'all been married? Forty. Yeah, more years. than two decades. F- almost forty. So I didn't know the so. exact number, so I said more yeah. than two decades. Okay. But here's the deal: is I re- I remember because he was he was seven years older than I was that that we would go to parties and they would talk about all the things they re- that they've done. It was all about remember when we did this and remember so and so and and I had no memories, I had no history, and it drove me crazy and, and I couldn't wait till. You know, we'd all done stuff together so I can say, hey, remember when we did this? But the things they talked about uh, and and got so excited about, I'm going like, wow, that's no big deal. And and how it was it was different. It was different. And so then all his friends started got they got divorced. I mean, his three friends got divorced as he got married, which scared me because I thought, oh, he's going to want to be out running around with the guys and all that stuff. But but they started dating younger people people so they were my age and then I had somebody at least to talk to but boy there seven years is a difference but Sam and I had a lot of things in common at least we're both 
conservative Republicans were both that. That was important. And oh, we like music. And and because my sister was his age, I I knew a lot of artists and I knew all that stuff. And he was an amazing singer, and and I really liked that. And he played the guitar and sang. And he had 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 a band that was up and did top forty stuff. So it was real exciting. And so I didn't care about the age difference. It was, you know, that he treated me so well. He was so sweet and understanding, and he liked the th- things that I didn't know. You know, some of the things that uh, that you get aggravated with, Richard, he would laugh at and think that was so cute. But after forty eight years. They may not be as cute. No, he, he de- even yesterday he said, you know, the things, I just never know what you're going to do. I never know what you're going to say. It's just, it's, you've always That's kept it That's why I kept that you way. around. That's right. He doesn't know what's going on. But you've met Sam, and we're totally the opposite in personalities. Well, that's one thing I love about learning about relationships is you kind of figure out who's in control when, yeah. you're, when you're talking to couples and stuff like that. And when I say control, it's more yeah. of like who's the one treading the water and the, who's the one trying to ride right on like right on the duck kind of thing and like that's one yeah. thing i like about my relationship is i there's certain points where i'm like oh i'm in control i didn't even know that all right cool like, whatever <laughs> so she just allows it that's what women do they allow yeah but you think i always you are. keep that notion open like if you allow me to do it well then i'm just gonna leave because i can just leave whenever i want to you think so I think – I don't know if there's – it's not, it's not a fear. So? It's not like if she's afraid of me leaving or anything mm-hmm. like that. But she mm-hmm. knows my personality enough to where – like I, when it comes down to it, I want to be happy. And if it's not making me happy or if it's not going my way, I can – I have the ability to drop it and move on to find what does make me happy. And that could be like a situation. That could be the type of food I want. And then that can also be in the relationship. Now, she's never complained about you – feeling you were kind of selfish no because i think through my selfishness there's a lot of times where it's respectable in a sense so like if i don't want to go to her friend's wedding Mm -hmm. for example like i don't know the people and i'm not in the wedding and all this kind of stuff like why like i i kind of we actually this recently happened and i was like why do i need to go because i know you want me there but you're involved like you're gonna be like you're not gonna be with me right you're gonna be in a wedding right uh, that's and so smart i was like you know i i i don't know these people that well i'd rather actually if we're going to austin i'd rather go see my best friend yeah while you're at the wedding while you're at the wedding sure. i'll pick you up i'll do this you know I'll, I'll be there but i think that's so smart because then she can flirt and she can talk to people and and you know and relive old times with people and stuff like that and if you're around you know she's having to See if you're okay. Are yeah. you all right? Let me talk to you. But I want to talk to all these people I haven't seen. Well, no, so no, actually, what what was? See, I don't mind going to weddings with her. Let's not think I don't. But see, what I I like is these people who she's involved with this wedding. She never really spoke about. Mm-hmm. And I asked her because there was some um, there was some drama involved. And I, said, I, I know it. And I asked her. I go because she got really upset that I couldn't go. Mm-hmm. Like they did. They sent her an invitation for one, oh. even though she's in the wedding. Oh, and man. so it was a big deal. Yeah. yeah, and like there wasn't a plus one. And so there was like a fight that she's like, I can fight her and try to get you to go. I'm like, don't worry about it. Like, <laughs> uh, but like we're really, oh, what, what, so this is how different we are. And I told her, I was like, do you plan on being friends with this, these people? Because mm-hmm. I can understand fighting and stuff like that because, you know, when in my friendships, when we're both wrong, we mm-hmm. like to tell each other and like it's important right. to work it out. But if I didn't care about that relationship, I'm like whatever, do what you got to do. I even told her, I was like, why are you even going? Yeah. Like if you don't care about this person, like why why even bother spending the money on a dress? Oh man, all this stuff oh. and going through it. Like I don't, and that's different between her and I. Like she she's willing to put up with the the BS and be more cordial Mm-mm. about it. But Mm-mm. no, I I understand that. Now uh, I'm going to be calling Brianna Donahoe. She's a single mom, two children, and uh, she probably has so much more input insight into this so uh we'll be calling her we'll be right back you guys don't go away it's like relationship day yeah the cindy cochran show real reality radio the cindy cochran show the first daily talk show serving montgomery county Did you know your favorite show on Lone Star Community Radio are on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Instagram, you name it, they're on it. Check out where they are online on IRLoneStar.com shows and see which of your favorite hosts are online. 
Make sure to follow them and see what is in store for the next broadcast. Follow Lone Star Community Radio on Twitter at IRLoneStar or Facebook with Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. The Cindy Cochran Show. You ain't heard nothing yet. Hey, you're back with the Cindy Cochran Show. It is so uh, great to be here today. It's Tuesday, and if you're just joining us on the Cindy Cochran Show, uh, Bob Smiley woke up this morning with a sore throat. He has a show tonight, and he decided on the money to spend his uh, voice, the you know what he has left of it, on you know making money instead of coming to the Cindy Cochran Show. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, but no, he was, he felt really bad about it. And he said, you know, please reschedule me, please. And I went, okay, I will. I'm really popping my peas, aren't I? I am. I can feel it. Okay. And well, you don't have to have that microphone so close. So like, back maybe it up, back it up, girl. Back it up, back it up. Okay. Uh, is that That's fine. better, better? You know, whenever you do voiceovers and stuff, you have to be able to swallow the peas. <laughs> That's what they'd say. Like, you know, Cindy swallowed the pee. And I'm like, oh, is there any way we could say that differently? But it's, you put, you put it in the back of your mouth instead of right in the front. So I, um, anyway, okay, I'll do better. I promise. We got Brianna Donahoe on the, on the phone. I am sure she's there. We got new phones and all that stuff. And so we're, uh, we're working through it. Uh, Brianna, are you there? I'm here. Yay. You even sound better. Then I do on this new mic. You're sounding good. We got we have good equipment that's come in and uh, new equipment. And uh, this week it'll be a 104.5 and 106.1 and on your FM dial, uh, Conroe. So uh, so everything's getting fixed up, and so it should happen like any moment. We're waiting for the birth, and they're going to call us and say it's a girl. I mean it's FM, and so it'll be it'll be great. Brianna, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. How are you doing today? I am so fabulous. You know, when you consider the alternative, I am fabulous. I just, you know, when people say that, they go, how are you doing? I said, fabulous. And they stop and go, huh? And then they have to, they question, what? Why don't you just say, I'm okay? I said, because that's what you're expecting. So, um, and if I choose to be fabulous, then I'm going to work my way into being what I want to be, right? Exactly. Right? Okay. All right. So I'm happy and I'm fabulous and uh, the mics are working and I can hear you. So I want to ask you, did, did you get to hear any of the first part of the show? I did. Did you not see my Facebook comment? Oh, I'm looking. I'm so sorry. I'm looking at Drudge Report. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell everybody I am right there on Facebook for you. So just hop on and ask me a question or anything. <laughs> and you're first person up and I just, I didn't see it. Okay, wait. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Let me okay. let me see it, and then uh, that you message messaged me. But didn't you think that uh, Richard had so much insight? To uh... <laughs> wait a minute. Where are you? There you are. Older. Okay. Now, what did older older mean? Because I, I said. About... I said you mm-hmm. you said young guys date younger. To mm. make them feel better. And I said, well, girls date older for what stability. Are, no, no, no. Oh, I did, that's I did, right. I didn't right. mean all guys. I said if you wanted someone older, those are the those are the situations you face. I prefer. I would prefer an older woman because there's not there any go. BS. That's right. Well, but, and, and what I'm running into at my age, at 37, is um, older guys are now wanting to settle down and have kids because, you know, they did their career stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm not that person because my tubes are tied. So that's not my path. So yeah. you're going to need to go younger. And, or adopt. and they're okay with that. Why, why are you turning them away? Just be like, what do you think about adoption or yeah. a surrogate? There's yeah. options today. I mean, when they uh, see, when uh, they. Because I don't want to potty train again. I'm not. Okay. So it's about you. <laughs> it's about you not wanting to do it. Well, okay. So now we know. That's totally me. But Brianna, here's the deal, though. Yeah. I mean, he has he meets your children. They're beautiful. They're bright. They're funny. They're talented and all that. Why would he need anything else in his life? This would be just perfect. Understood. I have pretty spectacular children, if I do say so myself. But 
a lot of guys want that that boy to carry on names and they want to mm. try for their own their mm. own and i get it i understand it i and i'm totally for them being able to do that but that's not gonna happen with me so you adopt an 18 year old you know that's a boy and that'll be fine he can send him off to college <laughs> then yeah, you, know, no, not, uh, yeah. you don't want to have no. to go through the teenage years uh, yeah no I, well no my statement to perspective guys is i will love any child that is currently here love it to death Mm -hmm. can absorb i don't want to create new yeah because you're you're right i think after you have had children you know naturally the deal is is that you you see real quickly that wait a minute they're gone they're like now they're into this and they're gone they don't love me make this on their own i have no children can get dressed by themselves yeah Yeah. i'll have to be part of that in the morning. But I, I mean, can stay in bed and relax, and then oh, get it's up wonderful. when I want. It's wonderful. Uh, but uh, like Chloe's getting close to that age. When she starts dating, it's goodbye, mom, goodbye, and so they're gone. And you go like, wow, I did all that. You know that getting up in the middle of the night and every two hours feeding them and changing their diaper and all and that bonded you to her. It was great, and she loves you for all that. But then they're their attention goes elsewhere and you've got to look back and go like, okay, that was, sure, like, that's like gone. They're so obnoxious is so that you don't feel bad about not wanting them around. I think God is so smart the way he did that. I think it's smart the way God makes you uh, stay pregnant for nine months. So by the ninth month, you wouldn't care if a Mack truck had to run over your left arm to get that baby out. That was okay. That would be fine. But uh, you're ready to to move on to a new stage. And I think after they're like three months, you're ready for them to do something different than just poop and eat and that's you're like okay let's do something different now and i think i think we have attention deficit and god knows that and so he he has created us for that but when you start dating when you have to go out into the dating world mm-hmm. and and look around and the different options that you might have that's what we were talking about is like how do you get back in that and if you are looking for someone older that's more stable secure and all that that i think women do do that is uh how hard is that brianna um i've been dating for four years now mm-hmm. and i'm still not married <laughs> it's not <laughs> see that's, that's you, how easy it is you well, you become very particular don't you because you go like i know what i don't want and the much and so much of what you don't want is out there and so you have to you have to try and cultivate or figure out somebody that you can mold to what standard you'd need. Because... Okay, being for just me, I have two little girls that I'm dating for. And so, yeah, he can be fine with me. There are things that I could let slip for me, but mm-hmm. there are standards that I hold for my girls and the way that I want them treated and the way that I want them to see a guy treating a girl. Because I do have a 12-year-old that will be dating in the next four years. <laughs> and... Um, so I want that example of the way it should be. And so I am very particular about, like, they don't meet people, period, until mm-hmm. I'm confident that that person's going to be around a while. And yeah. so That's I, I'm extremely particular about my kids. And so it just, it, yeah, I'm not just, it's not like I'm 19 again and dating mm-hmm. for me just for the fun of dating. Like, I'm dating for a purpose. Right. And it's right. very much. A lot of people without kids that are in my age group are dating for the fun of it, and I'm past that. And so it's, right. I'm very upfront about if 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 your end if your end game is not to be married in the next year, then we're good. <laughs> That's got to be so weird, though. To to who you meet, do you have to have that conversation? Do you have to have them fill out a you know a form or something? <laughs> I have it pretty early on. Like I have, like I'm dating with a purpose. Like if you're dating to have fun and I don't, I don't have to be married tomorrow. That's not my end game. But if you're, if your purpose is not to be married, then there's really no point in us dating. If you're just seeing. I, I wouldn't throw going. that out there <laughs> at the very beginning. Why not? Why because you have to, you, you and... also have to think about the other party involved where if someone told me that I wouldn't be relaxed. <laughs> I would be like, wait, what? 
And then I'd be like, I would not be myself. I'd be like, this is actually real serious, and I, I respect it, but I'm not going to call you back because that's – I, I wouldn't be able to relax. I'm okay with that. Yeah, that filters not, you, yeah. <laughs> I'm good. To me, it's all it about it's all about the odds, and you're reducing your odds and I'm when okay you say that. that. You should say that probably about three months into the dating. Oh no, no, no. no. You, you three get, months in, no. You're kids, and that's not okay. That's not okay. We don't, don't have to introduce them. them. I mean, how often are you going on dates with this guy? Maybe max once a week. Yeah, but three months in, you're buying the curtains. You're looking at, you know. Yeah, three months in. <laughs> just... Well, I'm talking about so so day one you meet somebody, and you have a casual conversation. You're like, we should we should actually go on a date, or go no. hang out. So you go on. No. No, so date number one happens week one, right? And then yeah. you're saying date one, you go, I'm going to get married. That's no. when you tell this person. That's what that's what no. I'm hearing on the radio. If we have, if we have good chemistry, if we. Like, if our date goes well, then we have that conversation of, okay, I need to know the seriousness of, uh, like, are you dating? After one date? date? And, um, yeah, because if we've got good chemistry, then I want to have the conversation. If we yeah, have good I, chemistry, then it was fun, it was good, and I'm I'm glad we met. I feel like that is zero to 100 in one date. It should be at least minimum three dates. Three dates. Um, I don't Three know. Days. You can get pretty, you know, you can. Three months. I mean, it sounds like you don't like dating. I don't like dating. So that's what it sounds like. I mean, <laughs> dating, I think dating is a lot of fun. And I'll tell you why I don't like dating. And I've, I've had this conversation with a couple of people. I'm still dating my girlfriend. Oh, she dropped. Oh, oh no, we dropped she, her? We, we upset her. We gotta go to break. Okay. All right. We have to go to break anyway, Brianna. Come back. All right. You're listening to The Cindy Cochran Show, and you can tell that it's real reality radio. The Cindy Cochran Show, real reality radio. Lone Star Community Radio is FM. That's right. Set your radio dials and your button presets to Conroe's FM 104.5 and 106.1, coming in June of 2016. To celebrate this edition and the addition of video versions of our talk and music shows on YouTube, cable TV, and Our City TV, we are offering special sponsorships rates, which include free audio spots that are played throughout our broadcast. Interested? Check out our sponsor rates for shows just like the one you're listening to online at IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor, or call the station at 936 647 5747 Reaching the people of Montgomery County with Montgomery County's community radio station with Lone Star Community Radio The Cindy Cochran Show The first daily talk show serving Montgomery County And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show We uh, Something happened we dropped Brianna but uh, we picked her back up again Brianna you're there right? Brianna, hello. Hi. Uh oh. Are you what phone? What kind of phone are you on? You on a cell or what? Yeah. It's open. Yeah. It's, it's picking up something weird, isn't it? Are you are you hearing it or is it just my? I think the cell reception is just a little. Oh, bad. is bad. Okay. All right. So. Because um, we're always perfect, Cindy. Yes, we never have a problem here. No, we don't. Uh, but it it just sounds like you're underwater. So, can you move around a little bit? <laughs> hey, get out of the bathroom. Yeah. And... Is that better? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Much better. Okay. All right, cool. Um, all right. Now, do calls come in while we're talking and you and you're having to ignore them or or somebody else picking them up? No, I'm I, I'm not the only person in the office. We are a multi person office. Okay. Tell them where you are. I work at Fair Claim Surfing. Uh we are at the corner of Booty and Nursery in the Woodlands. You're at the corner of Booty and okay. Nursery. Isn't that the awesomest road name? Isn't I that? when I moved to the Woodlands, when I first moved to the Woodlands and I kept saying Buddy, bit bud e and never ever said booty. And so somebody said it's Booty Road. Booty Road, what? Uh so uh, 
anyway, yeah, yeah, and Fair Claims Roofing is wonderful, and the boss there is Justin O'Neill, and he is amazing. And so, if He's you pretty need, pretty spectacular, yeah, yeah. That's the and give us your phone number very slowly. Two eight one seven one five twenty seven twenty seven. We do all of your roofing needs. We can walk through the claims process with you. Uh, if you want to go through your insurance company, the whole nine yards. Yeah, that's so awesome. That's that's beautiful. So tell a Justin he owes me for that one commercial. No, uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell him. No, no, no. Uh, I want him to come on and talk about roofers and roofing and. And uh, I'm sure he would love to I would. just get our name out there in yeah. the Conroe area. In the Conroe area, and be on FM uh, with a 200,000 reach. Of course, not all 200,000 may be listening at the same time, but it is uh, 200,000 potential people that we have to uh, listen to us. So anyway, I'm uh, excited. We were we were talking about that, and during the break, you know, Holly. Uh, Richard's girlfriend, let me backtrack, is, is just, she's beautiful. She's about four foot tall. She's so tiny. She's so cute. She just. She's 4'10". 4'10". Well, that's four foot. Um, but she's a tiny little girl. She's so sweet. And uh, it's just amazing. I, I would love to. I've never seen them interact. You know, like, she'll come in. I'll talk to her. But I haven't seen her and Richard interact. And Richard's got a somewhat of a. I don't know how to explain his personality towards uh, women. It's a very definite personality. Well, he like he wants to treat you just like if you were a guy, how you'd want to be treated. You know, he he wants to make sure everybody's I'm the golden tre- rule guy. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. I, you know, I am so glad you said that because I'm going to throw that back. I'm going to yeah, I'm going to play the scripture card on him. He's some stuff he does. Stop, like, Wait stop. a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, are you sure that's the way you want me to treat you? Uh, so, no, it's good. But Bring it on. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. When Wait. I'm at fault, I'll, I'll accept it. You will? Yeah, and I'll no, apologize. Problem. The problem is, I'm not afraid of you're, never at, you're never at fault, though. It's, it's, I try it's not to be. be. It has to be, though, you have to believe you're at fault. If I believe you're at fault, it doesn't matter. You're not going to apologize but if you believe your fault that's the problem is getting you to believe that you may but i'm good at convincing myself mm-hmm. that i'm at fault because it's pretty i'm pretty open with other people see he's got this les affaires i am uh, i'm so you know I, I will i can apologize or i can be you know stern about something whatever it feels like i need to do he seems like somebody that would live in austin that's how well, like talks. to give you an idea though i i understand the golden rule has a, is a double edged sword yes so like to give you an example that wedding i was talking about mm-hmm. i could t- treat her the way i would want to be treated where i could just be like hey don't go you know do this do that do that mm-hmm. but this is her maybe that's not how she wants to be treated in a sense, she doesn't. Yeah. She wants me to go because she needs me to right. be in the hotel room by myself, right? Doing nothing. That's what right. she wants. Yeah, and that she always has you to come back to if somebody yeah. if there's drama, she can come back to you and which I understand and tell you that. But because weddings are surrounded by drama most of the time. Although I was at a wedding this weekend, zero drama. It was really? Fantastical. Was there ah. a lot of alcohol? No alcohol. There was not a lot of alcohol. Yeah. I mean, there was alcohol, but it wasn't like normal weddings. Yeah. It wasn't an open bar or anything, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. With, uh, were you at a Church of Christ wedding? I was at a Church of Christ <laughs> wedding. My friend <laughs> uh, Kelly Reynolds and Clifton Wolgesmoose got married this weekend. Oh, okay. It See? Was a big, he's, my, he's my brother from another mother, so okay. we, we had lots of fun. In the see, isn't it more fun? This is what's so weird. Is like when you and Bob uh, Smiley hang out. It's just mm-hmm. it's you have so much fun because you're best friends and you've known each other a long time, and that's what makes it so fun. It just and if to think of anything romantic would be like ew ew because yeah, there's it would no there's mess no pressure. Up. We can just hang out and be ourselves. Exactly, exactly. So you've got the best side of Bob. And a lot of women that go to the, his shows and stuff like that go like, oh, uh, you're so fine, Bob. I just want to be your girlfriend and your wife and have your children and all that. So those people that want that from him, you know, I don't know. I, I just think you've got the best part of Bob when you're his friend because he, uh, yeah. 
he respects. He's a, he's a great friend. He's a very loyal friend. He's very, very loyal. He's a, he's a great friend. No, he, he is very loyal. And um, I think that in in people, when you walk into a room, like you you go someplace, are you looking, are you always looking to see if that, that guy might be the guy? No. You're not? No. No. Well, Richard, weren't you that way whenever you were single before you, you know, you and Holly became an item? Then you walk into a room and you start, you see, like, which girl you think would be the one you'd want to go out with? Is that just a guy thing? Uh, no, I think it's more of, like, what you what I wanted to do that day. Because, I mean, um, there's certainly, like, well, actually, that's how, when I met my girlfriend, uh, I wasn't planning on meeting her. I was going to visit my best friend who I haven't seen in a long time, and it was his birthday, and I was kind of... Mm-hmm. I was kind of hesitant because he was. I was like, I really don't want to go and meet all of his friends and like all these people I don't know. Right. And we're we're going to a festival, like a music festival, and I don't like music festivals very much. But it. But I saw. But I wanted to see him, so it's like I'll go, and it's during the day, so it'll be fun and whatever. And and I didn't even plan on meeting a girl or anything like that because I was more focused on the radio station. Like, cause that I'm in a unique scenario where I have my own business, right? And I don't have the flexibility. A lot of other friends of mine, guys, have where they have a steady income, they have the availability on the weekends, and you know, paying attention to somebody at a in the beginning of a relationship. Some people require that kind of attention, uh, but I can't provide that. But Richard, you have you, so I wasn't really a, looking. I wasn't really looking for anything. One thing about you, when you start start up a conversation, or somebody starts up a conversation, or they introduce you, uh, you know, Richard's in a sexy position, isn't he? Uh, Brianna, he can say, yeah, so I own my own uh, radio station. And well, I what am. I did actually to cope with those situations, I bring my my camera. And so I just take pictures. So I don't have to talk to anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I just walk around taking pictures. And uh-huh. and that gives me an excuse to do my own thing. And people understand it easily. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go take some pictures. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that's if I wanted to get away or something like that. And uh, and I got great pictures that day. But uh, You know, when you're doing a remote, though, I've watched when we go to, like, kids – kids museum the children's museum or some place and do a remote and he's sitting there with the, the headsets on he's behind the mic and and all that and the people that come up and talk to him and the girls that come up and talk to him he's just he's really a chick magnet it's mag not magnet magnet and um and so it's it's really it's really cute because richard is very good looking but it's just when he sometimes when he opens his mouth <laughs> And some stuff that comes out of it. I go like, Richard, you just ruined it. You should have just kept your mouth shut. He's looking at me. You should see the look. You know the look he gives. You know the look feel, that I he's giving. I can feel giving. the look through the phone. I I'm got it. I'm telling you, I don't know how somebody can roll their eyes back in their head so far, but he can. Uh, no, I love Richard. I think Richard has so many good qualities and that uh, it's been so interesting when he was dating around. We had more fun conversations. Uh, now that he's got this perfect girl. It's just, you know, he doesn't talk no, about I have funny much. stories, though. Like, I've I've definitely had girls who I've taken on a date who just didn't connect. They didn't with, connect with, with, with you? With me at all. And it was, I mean, I, what's funny about it, <laughs> you, I've always had relationships with girls who were friends first. And it always comes back to me where they make a comment to me about it's either they just didn't really understand at that time what was happening mm-hmm. or they didn't open up the possibility of just being friends. Because to me, I'd rather just be friends with somebody. And if I want to pursue a physical relationship, then I will. But most of the time when it's a pretty girl, and I think that's a lot of a lot of women who do meet me, they like me because I'm more of a friendly person than just kind of like most guys put on a move. In right. a sense, like I don't put on moves. Yeah. That put on moves. That's I, girls aren't stupid. They aren't. And oh, yes, they and are. Let me tell you, we sit around and talk about you afterwards. Oh yeah, and it's like, and you're a target uh, when you when you put on mm-hmm. your first move, mm-hmm. and you get denied. You're branded, and you're that person to them for forever. And it's so it's just Ever. really it's really funny because, and I've learned that uh, from my brothers. And so I never wanted to be a person who puts on a move to, to basically declare who, what your intentions are. And that's why I would never say, I'm going to get married. To you. I want to get married. Yeah. Because you don't want to say that because you're declaring yourself. That's not a good move. That's okay, not a good that's move. Not a good move. I, and, but like, you know, when it comes to, that comes to any people. That doesn't have to do with women. I yeah. And it comes with how I treat other people because right. I think it's more important to learn from each other than just uh, say that 
your feminist who wants to be involved in the KKK or something like that, some crazy outlandish thing. Well, okay, as a millennial, the women, I'm just trying to, to think, have, have women changed that much? Have they evolved to where if a guy comes up and he goes, hey, you know, you were so good looking. I know See, I've seen it work. I've actually I it seen worked. it work. That's what I'm and... saying. It still works, right? There's still women that yeah. that oh, fall yeah. for that. Well, I mean, I, it also depends on what the man is displaying. I mean, women can do the same thing. Yeah, but the deal is, is that before, back in the old days, uh, the it was so hard for people to meet because they're so shy that you know to come up and say something. So that guy that was that forward guy would at least make the contact and go like, "Hey," and he'd come across cross real confident and the women usually were you know insecure feeling and so they thought this is cool this is this guy he likes me he really well, likes me we just gotta be able to talk to people i don't think that's an age thing i no. think any age can approach anybody i mean that's one thing i'm kind of afraid of is i know me and my personality when i hit 60 mm-hmm. and i'm talking to younger people i'm gonna be creepy <laughs> like, it's you're just, not gonna care. You're not gonna well, care. I'm not gonna, gonna care. Like, I've lived my life, but I, could, I don't care what you I can totally see. You know, everyone kind of mis misinterpreting what I'm doing, especially if it's mm-hmm. young ladies. Like, I I could just see it because. So I'm, you've been you've been thinking about that, Richard? Well, no. Someone said, "Hey, if you were a little older, I would take that out of context." And I was like, "Oh, I guess so. I, maybe I should be careful what I say, <laughs> and you know how I compliment people and things like that." But that's so. I funny. feel like. Okay, so I feel like the best thing a single person can do is have someone of the opposite sex be their wing person. Because yeah, I will go up and talk to anybody. I don't yes. care. I'm more yeah. intimidated to talk to guys, but I, I mean, I'll go up and talk to any girl, and, and there not be an issue. And I, I think it's hilarious because I'll, I'll, and I'll go and report back, and so and be like, nope, that is not for you. Never mind. Get it. Pick somebody you else are- out. You weren't going out and trying to find the different women for Bob, were you? He wants to say, let me no, go, let me go talk no, to no. this woman no, over no, here. No. Okay, I just want to, I just want to make but, sure. But I have done that for other, for my other single guy friends. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, and I'll talk and I'll introduce, and I don't have a problem with that. And so, vice versa could be said. It, the best thing is to have a really good opposite sex friend. Mm-hmm that can do that for you. It's not going to be jealous. It's not going to be. Yeah. That's the first thing. Make sure that they don't want to be that person for well, you. Well, Let me tell you who's, who's going to be on the show tomorrow is Mindy. Who's going to be on the show? Mindy Miller. She's a former girlfriend of uh, Elvis Presley. She's one of the last girlfriends that uh, he had dated. And, um, and she said that what, uh, what, he was attracted to with her. So she didn't know who he was. She didn't, um, she didn't listen to his music. I mean, she had heard, heard of Elvis Presley, but she was into the surfer, you know, the beach boys and all that. And that's what she Mm -hmm. was into. And so when she met him, it was like, um, he loved the fact that she didn't know anything about his, you know, the phenomenon of, of Elvis Presley. And, and so it, it that attracted him to her. So it was, he could feel like they could talk about anything, but not be, you know, just about like, so whenever you got on stage at the Vegas thing, or whenever you did that movie uh, about the Kissing Cousins movie, would you, you know, could she? So he didn't have to talk about all that. They just talked about what was. Well, and he also about. probably knew that she really liked him for him. Right, that's a big deal too. And that was not uh, just for his money. Right, and that, and, that, and that was the thing. And so when um, and they dated off and on between and like in three for three years they dated off and on, and she still talked to him in the early part of uh, 1977. And so Mindy said that it was it was surreal, of course, because of you know the attention and all that. But that when you get you separate him from the crowd, he's he's such a great guy, and you felt that. I mean, I think, I think his fans feel that that's how he is. He's he's really sweet and and all that. So I love getting that side of it. And she said she would not do anything negative because too many other people that were his friends and people that he had, you know lifelong friends um, turned on him to to make money. And uh, she just, she'll do an interview. This is her third interview, and she's going to do it, but she just wants to stay positive. And she listened mm-hmm. to the show, and so she thought that this was this would be a fun, you know, show to do, and that uh, she, Don Wilson is her booking agent, and he 
you know, she kind of met and heard the show through him. But she said that's what she wanted, just something, you know, very positive. I called my sister, who was his diehard fan, and I told her that she was going to be on the show. And she was like, what? And so I said, if you have some questions, just let me know, and I will submit them to her, make sure that they're that they're cool. And then her uh, her son in law, his mother was so crazy about Elvis, just I mean, die hard fan, and that's what he grew up with. And right before he got married, his mother passed away, and so in honor of his mother, they all went to Vegas and they were married by a Elvis impersonator. <laughs> he thought she would oh, love that, that. <laughs> and it was so they they filmed it it was just it's that's even more surreal but uh so he submitted some questions you know and he knew that his mother would always want to know this so it's really it's going to be fun tomorrow to do that so i just want to remind everybody uh that that's what's going to happen and that you're not building a roof right now are you no Um, i'm doing paperwork about building a roof okay (laughs) It's like I heard something knocking. And I went, okay, I got to ask her about that. But uh, anyway, Brianna, uh, mm-hmm. you are going to have to, you know, come on the show a lot of times. And not just because, you know, my date didn't show up. So I have to, just you know. Just because Bob didn't show up, yeah. I got called. I yeah. got it. No, but if, you know, my, my fallback person, but more than that, you're so great. I love talking to you. I think you are amazing. So I just... Uh, I appreciate that you're my friend and that you're such a good mommy and uh, a great person. So uh, I'm going to let you go and I'm going to push my cough button and just check my cough button. And, uh, but I'll, uh, I will talk to you soon and thank you for being on the show today. You saved me. You saved me. Thank you you're so welcome. much. Uh, by the way, uh, our captain is going to be on Bravo tonight on the Andy Cohen show. So I will be. Watching. <sighs> okay. <laughs> captain Lee, Captain Lee, Captain Lee, Captain Lee. We Captain love Lee. Captain Lee uh, on below deck. And if you guys, you know, we talk about that once in a while, Brianna and I do. And if you want to know what we're talking about, you just check it out on Bravo, please. It's so great. So, um, so real quick, you got like two minutes to tell me uh, what did you think of the uh, the Ballyhoo with uh, Hillary and what they found on Uma Abedin's uh, and and Anthony Weiner's uh, computer. What do you think? I'm just laughing because oh. I'm like, really, you're gonna <laughs> wait until now to send all this stuff out into cyberspace, really. Really? No, I, no, you got to, you, he's not the problem. You can't shoot the messenger. This is the stuff that they found, well, because they were investigating Anthony Weiner's, um, what did I just say? Anthony Weiner's, I, because he was uh, te- okay. sexting a 15-year-old, so they were, they were checking on that, and all of a sudden, here's... When are we going to learn that Anthony, Anthony Weiner should be outlawed just for his name alone? Just Anthony alone. Anthony Weiner does not need to be in politics. At all. Because my, my, you know, Samuel and Cindy just start laughing, fall on the floor every time they talk about it. Now they're, he's back in the news. But, uh, so they find... And it's all over the place, yeah. And they find, <laughs> they find all these emails sent to and from the State Department. So what is he supposed to do when they, when they, you know that some agents have read some stuff. And they bring it to him and say, you know what, you, you're you supposed to tell Congress if we found something else, we found something else. So you, he had to report mm-hmm. to Congress. And that was what he had uh, pledged to do when he was before them before. So I think it's just, I mean, it just keeps it fascinating. I mean, November 8th, November 8th is going to be the highest rated <laughs> election night. Everybody's going to oh be gosh. around. Everybody. Everybody Every, in the planet. Yeah. We'll be, yeah, those at Russia, from Russia to here, uh, yeah. will be uh, looking to see who wins this. So I am, I'm so excited. Anyway, uh, but more excited that you're on the show and thank you very much and you have a great day i appreciate you more than you know anytime anytime okay thank you bye-bye talk to you later all right that was brianna donahoe uh saving me because bob smiley got sick this morning and was has sore throat and he's got a show tonight so he could not be on but he will be back he said whenever we want him to come on we'll We'll get him back. Okay, guys, uh, we are just about out of time. Yeah, we're just seconds away. Tomorrow, 
don't forget to be here tomorrow for Mindy Miller, former girlfriend of Elvis Presley. Tell your friends. Tell your friends. It's going to be so much fun. And if you have questions, please Facebook me. on message in my Facebook. It's The Cindy Cochran Show. And uh, I'll ask her, okay? All right. We'll see you tomorrow. The Cindy Cochran Show, Real Reality Radio. Thanks for checking out this production on Old Star Community Radio, Montgomery County's radio station. For more information on this show and other shows on Lone Star, check us out online at IRLoneStar.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a program on Lone Star Community Radio and reaching the local audience of Montgomery County on FM, Internet, and TV media, please call 936-647-5747 or contact us online at IRLoneStar.com. This recording is a Lone Star Community Radio production produced by the show host and Dick Schistler of Lone Star Community Radio. Interested in volunteering as a music DJ or starting your own talk show? Contact Dick Schistler at Dick at IRLoneStar.com or by phone at 936-647-5747.